Hey, what is up, you guys? Nick at the Lost River Drive-In, here to rank a franchise I haven't ranked yet. One of the big three. Oh my gosh, Nick's finally gonna venture outside of his Halloween bubble? You damn right I am. Tonight, we are gonna rank the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise from my least favorite to my favorite. I just wanna tell you guys which ones I like, which ones I don't, why I do, and why I don't. Coming in at number nine, my least favorite, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. This was the one movie in the series I had never seen until two nights ago. If you follow me on social, you uh, saw me document the history on my Instagram story of me watching this movie for the first time. Boy, I am so sorry, CHH, but this movie sucks, and I get it. If there are people out there that are nostalgic of it, hey, more power to you. I like Halloween 5, and everybody shits on that movie, so come on. I'm not here to judge. I did not care for this movie at all. It got way too campy. Freddy is no longer scary at all. It's just a complete joke. It's not scary. It's not inventive. There's not even really a lot of kills. The ending is so dumb. So dumb. Freddy's dead. Nope. Didn't like it. I knew within the first 10 minutes when Freddy's on the broomstick saying, I'll get you my pretty and your little soul too. <laughs> nope. Fuck this movie. Coming in at number eight is A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. I will say, this is another one I've only seen once. I do think that there are some cool animations and visuals in this movie, the pool sequence being one of them. I think the idea of Freddy taking the souls of those he murders and putting them into the child, the unborn child, to make it be like him is kind of a cool idea. But man, it's just bad. I think the acting is bad. Again, we got into just the hokey Freddy where there's a fine line you can draw with the hokey Freddy and these later movies, man, they just, they lay it on way too thick. The kills are lacking. The story is, like I said, there are some morsels that could have been decent, but man, no, no. I just really did not like the Dream Child, guys. If you like the Dream Child and you're more of a fan of, you know, the Nightmare series than I am, more power to you. I, I am not going to tell you that you're this or you're that for liking or not liking a movie. I just personally didn't care for it. Coming in at number seven is going to be a Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master. Now, I will say from here on, I find enjoyment in all of these movies. So some people might be surprised that Dream Master is at seven for me, but let me explain. I did not like Patricia Arquette being recast, although her character doesn't get much time in this movie anyway. I didn't really care for that. It's kind of like the Jamie Lloyd thing in Halloween 6. They're not in it for a lot, but it's still annoying that they were recast. Once all of the Elm Street kids are taken care of, isn't Freddy's purpose kind of fulfilled? I don't know. That's, that's the way I kind of looked at it. It's like Halloween Resurrection, you know? Michael gets Laurie. Well, isn't that it? I mean, what, what's the point? You know, that was his reason for coming back, but he's here, so he might as well kill more people. I think the inclusion of the different abilities and powers that they have, it, I, I think that's cool to fight Freddy I, and, you know, passing them on to each other. Like, I think that idea is cool. For me, it's not a movie that I find myself rewatching a lot. I've seen it twice. I haven't watched it in about a year. It's been the, the last time I saw it. Some of the kills are really cool. I will say that. This is one of those nightmare movies that walks that line of, the hokey Freddy and the creepy Freddy. I think that this movie does that pretty well. Still a little hokey, you know, but overall, I think it walks that line pretty well. The Dream Master is a decent movie. You know, it, I'm not, I'm not taking a dump on this movie. I think this movie's okay, but it's not a movie I'm going to find myself visiting a lot when I watch this franchise. Coming in at number six is A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Everybody knows Nightmare on Elm Street 2 pretty well for being a gay horror movie, as people say, and kind of delving into that taboo in the 80s. I thought that was cool. Some people would say they don't lay it on thick. It's definitely there, and I just think it's cool to explore that in a horror movie in the 80s, you know, for the time. I, I thought that was that was a nice touch. I also really enjoyed the pool sequence at the end. Although it doesn't make a ton of sense, watching Freddy go on a rampage and being told like, hey bro, you gotta calm down, and Freddy's like, fuck you dude, I'm gonna kill you all. That was awesome. Like, it's awesome. You, you can't not watch Freddy hack up a backyard full of people and, and not be like, oh, that's bad. No, it's pretty good. I do like, as the movie goes on, the house gets hotter, his room starts to melt, you know. Some of the stuff, though, some of it's kind of confusing. There are moments in time where you're like, oh my God, did Jesse actually kill these people? Uh, and if he did, was it Freddy? I mean, for a casual viewer, I mean. And I would consider myself, for some of these movies, a casual viewer. Don't worry. I understand it now. I'm just saying, there were some, there were some things that were confusing. Freddy is very dark in this movie, and I like that, 
But what we've come to know with Freddy Krueger, you can walk the fine line and this movie doesn't. He's just very dark, which is enjoyable. It's a nice change of pace for a little bit. I wouldn't want my Freddy like that all the time. But overall, Nightmare 2 is decent. I do find myself enjoying it. And, you know, I don't think it deserves some of the hate that it gets. I really don't. I think it's a good movie. And I think you guys, if you haven't seen it, you should give it a try because uh, I really do enjoy it. Coming in at number five is going to be Freddy vs. Jason. Yes, I consider this movie a nightmare movie and not a Friday the 13th movie. And the reason for that is it's Freddy's story. I mean, yes, Jason is brought into it, but it's Freddy's story. You know that, I know that, we all know that. So the kills, the fights between Freddy and Jason, some of the one-liners in this are fucking awesome. When Freddy and Jason are fighting in the boiler room and the water starts pouring down and Jason, you know, cowers like a little bitch. Freddy's just digging his fucking claw into his temple. That was awesome. I really do enjoy, it's super fun. I love the rave party scene with Jason just fucking hacking people up. I like the end. I think the, the end fight is just awesome. The ambiguity of the ending though and not having like a clear decisive winner, kind of annoying. I think everybody agrees with that. Overall, Freddy vs. Jason is super fun. The one problem is it takes a lot of the tropes from Friday the 13th and I think that they should have kind of straight away from that. There's a little bit too much unnecessary like nudity and, and elongated sex scenes and stuff. And I'm not a huge fan of that in my horror. And some of you might be like, what? I mean, if it makes sense, if it's pertinent to the story, okay. But if it's just there to be there, it's just, I don't know. It, and I also didn't care so much for some of the actors. Kelly Rowland in this movie, I think she did a terrible job. Everybody likes her when she stands up to Freddy. I mean, I laughed the first time I saw it, but you know, upon rewatch, I'm like, God, I hate in these movies when they try to make some of these actors and actresses make these killers their bitch. It doesn't work like that. So overall, man, I, I enjoy Freddy vs. Jason. I think it's a good movie. I think it's fun to watch. And uh, I could do without the Freddy Krueger slug or whatever the hell that thing is, Caterpillar. I don't know. It's a decent movie. All right, so this is where it's going to get dicey. Again, guys, this is my ranking. This is my opinion. I'm not saying this movie is objectively better than this movie or so on. I'm just saying I prefer this one to this one and this is why. So... Coming in at number four, I'm gonna get some hate for this. A Nightmare on Elm Street, 2010, the remake. Yes, I know. Let me address a few things right out in the open. No, the CGI effects for Freddy was a terrible idea. No, it should have never happened. Recasting Robert England shouldn't have happened either. He, they should have found a way to get him on board with this. Rooney Mara as Nancy, she is awful in this movie. And it's not because she doesn't have the chops for it. It's because she didn't care. The fact that she put Fourth, almost no effort, not about it. And, and the child molester storyline. Yeah, it's problematic. I get, you know, Freddy was a child murderer. Although I, you know, we all know, Wes Craven has talked about that he had originally thought of making him a child molester and it would be more believable to be doing that and get away with it than murdering children, you know, I would think. But regardless, it, it's a very touchy subject. Something, you know, very personal to me as well. It's just, it didn't need to happen. Yeah, it's unnecessary. The change was unnecessary. Now, having said all those things, I think Jackie Earl Haley did did great with what he was given. You give him a better script, a better director, and better actors around him, and better practical effects, and you probably don't have many complaints with him. He did fine. He made a couple one-liners here and there, but he was really kind of just a dark Freddy, and I think he did fine. I think a lot of the actors in the movie, they're okay. You know, I like Kyle Gallner. I like his character in this movie. Everybody says he looks like a whiny little bitch the whole time. Yeah, maybe, but I think it's believable. The dude's tormented. I do like that they kind of confuse you a little bit and make you think like, holy shit, was Freddy actually innocent? That was cool the first time I watched it because I was like, dude, that would be crazy if they were like switching it up like this. Thank God they didn't, though, because at the end of the day, I would have been mad if that ended up being the case. It was just an interesting thought to have for about a half hour. Some of the kills are super cool, man. I mean, they really are. Like, they're they're cool. I, I, I do like the cinematography. I, I like the score. I just, I find myself enjoying this movie. I don't think it's a bad time. I, I really don't. Is it sacrilegious? Yeah, sure. It absolutely is in a lot of ways, and I'll totally agree with that. You'll never find me arguing about that. I just think the movie gets a lot of unnecessary hate to no fault of its own. You know, don't blame Jackie or Haley. Don't blame some of these actors. Blame blame the studio. Blame the director. Blame the writers. Overall, though, I think it's a fun watch, man. I really do enjoy it. And I loved the inclusion of the micro naps, especially the scene where she's in the convenience store and she's coming in and out of the... I mean, that, that was awesome. I really did think that was cool because what are you going to do then? You're having these micro naps. What are you going to do then? You don't even have to go to sleep. You don't have to make a conscious decision to go to sleep. Your body's doing it for you. That was a pretty cool idea. So I enjoy the remake. I do. Not in my top three or anything, so don't throw stones at me. I digress. Coming in at number three, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Just rewatched this movie the other night and I found myself really enjoying this movie. Whereas the night before I watched Freddy's Dead and I wanted to be Freddy, 
dead. <laughs> New Nightmare is actually pretty cool. It takes a little bit to get going. That was one complaint I had with it, but I get they were trying to restart and reset the franchise. So I, I get that, you know, some character development, some story. But once it gets going, man, it really does get going. I think that the meta-ness is cool, you know, like, oh, it's just Heather Langenkamp, it's, it's just Robert England, and, you know, Freddy's fictional, and I played Nancy in these movies. Oh my god, like, Freddy's coming into the real world, and he's like, Attacking my family and me. Oh my god, he's real. Like, that's cool. I, I do enjoy that. I did not even remember that the uh, kid who played Gage in Pet Cemetery is her son in this. I thought that was cool, too. I really just, I found myself enjoying the movie. You know, it was a fresh take. They didn't give you a lot of Freddy, which I enjoyed. Because by this point, a lot of people were like, we've seen this crazy hokey Freddy over and over and over again. It was nice for them to kind of take a step back and kind of pull Freddy away a little bit. And let you get into these characters again. And these settings again. And these stories again. And then give you the monster after the buildup has been there for the monster. Overall, I found myself really enjoying New Nightmare and uh, it makes it as my number three. Coming in at number two is A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors. I know this is a lot of people's favorite and I can see why. I absolutely love the scene with taking the guy's veins and, you know, he's basically a puppeteer and then making him jump out the window or off the ledge. I'm trying to remember exactly, but I thought that was awesome. I, I love to see Heather Langenkamp back. I thought she was even better in this movie than she was in part one. Some of the kids and their powers and stuff, like I thought it was cool. Like some people might look back on it and be like, oh, that's so cheesy. Man, the movie's a blast. It's super fun. Uh, it's well acted. It's well shot. Freddy is your perfect mix of like one-liners and hokey while also being dark. The kills are awesome. The ending is awesome. Heather Langenkamp is awesome. There's nothing negative that I can say about this movie. I genuinely love this movie. This is one of my favorite Nightmare movies. And uh, yeah, it is a fantastic movie. And coming in at number one, to nobody's surprise, is A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. I understand why some people struggle with one and three, but you know, which one's their favorite and which one is number two for them. And for me, I really do enjoy number one more than three. I don't think it's more fun. I just, for me, it's a little more memorable and maybe it's nostalgia because I've been a huge fan of that movie since I was a kid. It scared the shit out of me as a kid. Freddy was the scariest of the big three. I don't care what anybody says. Michael may be my dude, but Freddy was the scariest. No, point blank. If he can get you in your dreams, how the fuck are you safe from this guy? Just saying. I just, I really enjoy this movie. Robert Englund is great in this movie, and they don't show him a lot either. And when they do, his face is almost like in shadowed, like, or in darkness. And I think that's cool because, like, it leaves some mystery to the character. Because this is a new character. We don't know anything about him at this point. I think Heather Langenkamp did a good job in this movie. Although, like I said, I think she did better in part three. But she was younger. You know, I get it. I think that Johnny Depp's death scene is one of the most memorable to me in horror movie history. I mean, whew. My uncle had a waterbed in his bedroom at my grandparents' house from his childhood. And when we would stay at my grandparents' house, I wouldn't want to stay in the waterbed after I'd watched this movie. Because that scared the shit out of me. That is a true story. That is a great kill. I I just, I really love this movie, guys. It's a classic. There's not a lot that needs to be said about it that hasn't already been said. So A Nightmare on Elm Street comes in at number one. I will say really quick again, uh, the back half of this franchise, I'm not a huge fan of. From Freddy's Revenge on, I enjoy all of the movies. The three movies before that, I'm just not a fan of. If you are, awesome. More power to you. I respect the hell out of that. This may be your favorite franchise. Some of those movies may be your favorite ever. Hey, man. Awesome. We're a horror community. We're here to build each other up, not tear each other down. Discuss in the comments. I really appreciate you watching this video. Like, comment, make sure to subscribe. And thanks for coming with me on this journey down Elm Street to rank the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Nick at the Lost River Drive-In. Pulling out.